Autodesk Labs is home to innovative new technologies. Vice President of Autodesk Labs is Brian Matthews. Brian, welcome into tomorrow. Thank you, Dave. Tell me more about Autodesk Labs then. If you talk about innovative new products, you've got my attention right there. <laughs> Absolutely. So at Autodesk Labs, what we're trying to do is take these new technologies that are that are that have hit the market, and we're trying to figure out how to apply them to the design industry. So whether you're trying to design a building or a, a train or an airplane or even the next video game, that's where Autodesk Labs comes in, is taking these new technologies and trying to transform them into products that professionals who design these things can use. Well, then what is it that Autodesk is actually trying to achieve with your division, with Autodesk Labs, to really help to bring kind of these new ideas to market? Or, or help folks who are wanting to design new things and say, guys, help me. You have all the technology, and you're able to do it. That's right. Well, we don't necessarily do much of the pure academic research, but there's a lot of people out there doing that. And what we try and do is translate that into something that can become a product someday. And the way we do that is through customer involvement. We have a community of early adopters that we have gathered of, of professional designers, and we involve them by bringing this really exciting new technology creating prototypes for them. I have a, a team of engineers who rapidly produces prototype applications, and we put it in the hands of users and get the feedback on that. Well, that's pretty cool. So they're really able to get even more excited about their ideas a lot faster probably than they could ever before. That's right. And there's, some, there's a whole set of new technologies that have hit the market. They've actually been out there maybe 10 years or something, but they haven't been turned into a product. They're really not out there with the consumer. And we think there's a fundamental shift happening away from the keyboard and mouse to the way people design, really democratizing who is a designer, who is an architect, who is an engineer. Once the technology makes it simpler, when the computer can do the math and the hard part, it really allows us to be more creative and, and be more inclusive with who a designer is. Is it fair to say that your division, Autodesk Labs, is, is kind of a high-tech think tank? I mean, is that another way to describe the kind of things you do for your, for your clients? Yeah, a lot of people think of us. We do some research, but really it's taking research that's already been done and yeah. figure out how to popularize it. So let's take some examples there. Uh, cloud computing. Uh, this is uh, where you have thousands and thousands of computers that are sitting in a data center and you can connect it to over the internet. What are you going to do with that? Now imagine you're remodeling your, your home kitchen and you want to visualize what's it going to look like with this color paint and that kind of tile floor and that kind of countertop. Uh, doing really high quality accurate renderings of that can take hours uh, on a very high end computer that most consumers wouldn't even have. Yeah, if you're a big time high end gamer, maybe you're starting to approach the, the technology and the speeds of processing and that kind of thing, but not likely. That's right, and even in game technology, the images that you get still look like they're a game. You want, your, you want to see your kitchen before it's real, and that's where cloud computing, where we can, we're actually taking thousands and thousands of processors in a data center, and we can do in four seconds what would take hours at home on your home computer. But how could I, as the consumer, wanting to see what my, in your example, kitchen might look like, gain access to this cloud computing technology. So we have a, a, a web uh, prototype, for example. There's a thing called uh, showroom.labs.autodesk.com. It's a website. You go there, and you can actually drag and drop out of catalogs of, of tiles and flooring and stuff. And then effectively, our supercomputer behind the scenes computes what it would look like. It does the visualization in real time rather than you know taking hours on your home computer. So it, it renders uh, the, the new cabinet look right away. Uh, That's maybe right. I want to now change the countertops. and. I drag and drop a different countertop over all the countertops are changed. I saw a great example of this during uh, the keynote session where your CTO was actually showing us how this works, blowing everybody away. This is awesome. Yeah, that's one example. It can apply to many other things. Imagine doing earthquake simulations on, on a building at the same time that you're designing a building, figuring out the most green and sustainable way to align that building relative to the sun. These things are, are, have been possible for a long time. Uh, but are computationally prohibitive. It used to take too long uh, to run the simulation. Now you can do it in the cloud. Well, one of the other things that your CTO showed in this uh, keynote session was bringing images, 3D images, out from behind the glass of our computers. And I wonder how you can explain how that worked. It was, it was truly awesome. Absolutely. We call that augmented reality, and there's, <laughs> it comes in, in various forms. But the idea is really getting away, again, from the keyboard and mouse. So uh, some technology, what we call multi-touch, so these new screens like you see on your iPhones and stuff, but it, having that on a big scale where you can just use your hands to manipulate things. Uh, the one that we showed on our 
main stage, uh, our CTO showed, was, uh, was this cube, for example, that has a special marker that uh, the computer can understand. It's kind of like a barcode on a product, but it's three-dimensional, and that allows the computer to see how you're manipulating an actual object. So we can substitute, through a video feed, uh, this virtual object with uh, some other uh, computer generator objects. And, and again, if you I were thought it was almost like a chroma key thing he was holding up in front of a screen, but it was this cube, which for those listening on the radio and not able to see the video uh, podcast yet, have no fear. When you get home or back to work tomorrow in front of your computer, uh, take a peek and you'll, you'll see the cube we're talking about. It's really kind of pixels, uh, black and white pixels, best way I think to describe this on maybe a one inch by one inch cube, that he was holding in front of a computer screen and using a very expensive webcam mm -hmm. shooting it now toward the screen brought this image out from the screen sure and it was it just blew us away and we think this will apply to things like cell phones imagine the ultimate mm -hmm. stud finder where you look at your cell phone and it's got a video feed from its camera going through and you can superimpose a model a 3d model of what's behind your walls where are the wires where oh, are that the kind of stud I was gonna say I just hold up the phone to myself for stud finder oh but okay in the walls gotcha <laughs> Good stuff that your labs group is working on. By all means, check out what Brian and his team are up to. It's labs.autodesk.com for more. Delight to have you on with us. We've got to get you back on again because there's so much more to talk about and keep up the cool work. Okay, thank you, Dave. We're back with more as Into Tomorrow continues from Las Vegas. I'm Dave Graveline. This the Advanced Media Network.